One thing in building the guessing game servlet edition application that we haven't discussed much so far has been the deployment descriptor. So in this video we'll be checking out the deployment descriptor for our guessing game servlet edition. In order to understand what we're going to see in the deployment descriptor, let's discuss the components and run through the game one more time. Three components. Index. When this application runs, the index will fire up and we'll see the initial form. User will enter a number or a guess, click the button, and then the index will call the game servlet. The game servlet will run. It will use game number as necessary, and from that point on, it will handle the view and the control. We we'll go back and forth from the client to the server, always accessing game servlet when we make a request to the server. Let's run that and see that in action. Run as run on server. Here we see the index.jsp. Note the URL. It just shows the guessing game servlet version root domain. It does not show index.jsp. Type in a guess, but that's what's happening. It does not show index.jsp, but no doubt this is the page that's being shown. Type in a guess, hit go, note the URL. When we hit go, do guess was the URL that was accessed. Target's 389, I'm going to guess that now. And again, when we hit go, note also do guess was the result. I got it right in two guesses. I'm very good when I can read the target. Play again. Oh, here we see index.jsp was called. So why didn't we see that to begin with? The answer to how all these components work together lies in the deployment descriptor. So we're going to look at that now. Another name for the deployment descriptor is called web.xml. On some of your views, you'll see the deployment descriptor listed right under the name of the project. You can double click on that to open it. Or, if not, browse down into web content, into the webimp folder, and double click on web.xml. We had a look at web.xml when we were building our JSP only version of the guessing game. And at that time, the only thing we saw were a bunch of welcome files. Here we still see the welcome files listed. One of those is index.jsp. If we wanted to clean this up a little bit, we could delete everything but index.jsp. One thing to note, if you don't see this view, there are two views of the web.xml file, the source view and the design view. You can see that in these tabs at the bottom. Click on design to see a listing. Click on source to see the XML version. I prefer the XML version. The welcome file, as we saw with our JSP application, determines which file is going to open when someone accesses the root of our application. That's why we did not see index.jsp at the very beginning when the application ran. Now we have some more components in this application that require something in web.xml. How do we connect to the servlet? That's what this web XML code does. Notice it comes in two parts. At the bottom we have what we call the servlet mapping. You'll see that one of those is a URL pattern. If you recall back when we created the game servlet, or if you don't recall, go back and watch the video, we changed the URL mapping to do guess. And you notice that's listed here. This is telling us in WebXML that the URL pattern do guess should cause the servlet called game servlet to run. So that just maps the URL pattern to the servlet. Now that doesn't necessarily map the servlet to the Java class, and that is what is defined here in this servlet section. You might recall that when creating the servlet, we added a description. We can see that listed here. There's a display name and a servlet name. And this servlet name is actually connected to a Java class that's in the controller's package and is named game servlet. Incidentally, we were lazy and left the servlet Java class name equal to game servlet. But it would have been okay if we'd called this play game, for instance, the servlet name. Something totally different than the Java name. This in the web XML is what makes the connection. URL mapping to the servlet name, the servlet name to the Java class. So it'd be totally okay if we changed those names. Going back to what we had before and store that. 
So the deployment descriptor's job is when the server fires up the application for the first time, it will look at the deployment descriptor and it will determine various things about the application and how it should run, such as which file is the default file in the root, in our case index.jsp, and connecting URL patterns to servlets and servlets to Java classes. We'll see in later applications that more things might be added to the web.xml file. This has been a Piercy production.